town with a tradition as the birthplace of football. Hardly the kind of place one would expect to emerge as a leader in a different sport, a new sport, the game of indoor soccer. But in this building, the Canton Civic Center, an astounding phenomena has been evolving over the last two years. From November to April, the people of Canton have packed the Civic Center, where they get invaderized. The Canton Invaders of the American Indoor Soccer Association have captured the imagination and won the hearts of the people of Canton, and for good reason. The American Indoor Soccer Association is just two years old, but in that time, the Canton Invaders have established a tradition of excellence, winning the league championship in each of the first two years of the league's existence, in addition to leading the league in attendance both seasons. Little Canton is becoming big time in the world of professional indoor soccer. And it's not hard to understand why when you have a team like the Canton Invaders inflaming the passions of its fans. They may look pretty on the finishing end of a goal, but when it's time to get to work and get the job done, they roll up their sleeves and get as tough as anyone. And if you like a winner, you have to love this team. Last season, they proved not only to be once again the class team of the AISA, but swept every individual honor the league had to offer. Trevor Dawkins was brought in last season to take over the coaching reins of the Invaders. After a sparkling 20-year career as a player, Dawkins was in his rookie season behind the bench. Yet he led the Invaders to a league record 33-7 season on his way to being named AISA Coach of the Year. The league's most valuable player, None other than Canton's Don Tobin, who was named to that honor by members of the media from around the league. Last year, Tobin led the AISA in assists, setting up teammates for goals 39 times. He scored 19 goals himself to finish with 58 points, eighth best in the league. Midfield picked off by Anderson. Anderson fields Tobin, middle of the four, he fires and scores! From his midfield position, Tobin was the invaders on the field general, conducting the team as if it were a symphony orchestra. He became one of four players to be named to the first team all AISA squad at the end of the season. Only two players have made first team all AISA in each of the league's first two seasons, Canton's Oscar Pisano and Kia. Pisano repeated last year as the AISA defender of the year, a rugged defender who could attack out of the backfield, 30 seconds in the quarter. Tobin, right side, Pisano. He scores! Yes! Well, that's vintage Oscar Pisano. I tell you, excellent pass by Donnie Tobin. He just laid the ball off beautifully, and Oscar is well known for his in-swinger, and he just hit that ball on the inside of the foot and just hooked it around the outside of the post. And that's a vintage, vintage Oscar Pisano. So Oscar registered 71 block shots and added 17 goals and 28 assists. The darling of the Canton fans became Kia, the 20-year-old youngster from Phoenix, Arizona. Despite his diminutive size, he played like a giant, leading the league with 52 goals to finish third in the scoring race with 67 points. To Tobin. Tobin, back to Anderson. Over to Kia. Kia. Kia with the right shot. Goal! A beautiful right-footed shot. That's Keith Tobin. With Kia on the power play, opponents found it deadly to get caught shorthanded against the Invaders, as Kia set a professional indoor soccer record with 18 power play goals last season. He also shared the league lead in hat tricks and game-winning goals, and became the only player in AISA history to crack 100 goals, scoring a remarkable 1.3 goals for every game he's played. The Invaders had to find a goalkeeper last season after losing the league's top goalkeeper from the 84-85 season, Mike Barbaric. 
entered Jamie Swanner, who erased all of Barbaric's records. A gem in goal who had achieved All-American status at Clemson University, the St. Louis native protected the Canton net like a Brinks guard. And he's picked up by Lola. McGeeo with a move around one. Fires oh and Swanner with a heavens. dandy save. What a beauty by Swanner going out to get the left hand of the ball. He posted a minuscule 3.55 goals against average and a 20-3 one-loss record, both league records, on the way to being named AISA Rookie of the Year. Defender Tim Tima came into his own last season and was recognized as one of the league's top backliners, making first team all AISA. He led the Invaders in blocked shots with 79, but that tells only part of the story. Invaders lead 3-2. Pekosinski has two goals. Paxos has one. Kramer outside Tima. He's got the open shot. He scores! He drills it into the left side of the net. Timmy Tima with a howitzer, and the Invaders lead 4-2. And I mean, he got all of that one. Tim Tima. Art Kramer joined Kia to form a deadly one-two punch for the invaders on the attack. The St. Louis native posted 33 goals and 24 assists to finish ninth on the league scoring charts. Kramer and Kieka fight for it there. Artie comes away with the ball. Here come the invaders, four on three if they hurry. Kramer for Tobin, left side. He fires Kramer yes. the rebound scores! He also tied for the league lead in game-winning goals and received honorable mention honors on the league's All-AISA team. Ken Lola returned for his second season with the Invaders and for the second consecutive year played in every Invaders game. Here is Lola in the front end for Pikasinski. Back to Lola, scores! Yes! And the Invaders get right back in it. Well, I tell you what, that's the best way to solve all problems because Bob, this quarter was becoming a frustrating quarter for Cam. They were they were playing very well, and they were they found themselves down two nothing. The New Jersey native achieved All-American honors at Duke and proved a valuable two-way player from his midfield position, tallying 26 points and 45 blocked shots. He was one of the keys to Canton's transition game and won fans with his all-out non-stop hustle. Defender Walt Schlotthauer joined the Invaders last season after spending his first AISA campaign with the Columbus Capitals. Here's in Pierce with a save, didn't get the rebound. Kia couldn't control Schlotthauer. Well, Pierce was the one that a native Ohioan, Schlotthauer added punch to the Invaders' power play unit, scoring 10 times while the Invaders were on the man advantage, in addition to posting 37 blocked shots. While Steve Frick kept the man down unit a threat when the Invaders had a man in the penalty box, the Akron native scored a pair of shorthanded goals among his 15 tallies. Steve Frick, he shoots, he scores! It's history! Tozer could do nothing but watch, and they're going to get a short-handed goal. The Invaders are going to win. It's 7-3. to three. Defender Tom Condrich stood out in his second season with the Invaders as one of the league's premier man-to-man -man markers and penalty killers. Bill Namofsky provided ample backup to Swanner in goal as he finished as the league's second leading goalkeeper with a 3.64 goals against average and a 13-3 one-loss record. Long and their ball pass is put back by Bakhtiari and a beauty of a save by Namofsky. Going up high and picking that off the left corner. Well, I'll tell you what, that, you know, long shots every once in a while. Rudy Pikasinski with 19 goals and 10 assists added depth to the Invaders offense. Tobin lead ball for Pikasinski, got behind the defense. Rudy scores! Well, I'll tell you what, that was an excellent play by Donnie Tobin on the assist, Bob. He waited and he saw that the Louisville players were in a line change and Pikasinski was running unmarked down the right side and he just said, over the course of the season, team and league records fell before the Invaders like the autumn leaves. From December 20th to February 9th, the Invaders were undefeated, stringing together a 14-game winning streak, longest ever in the AISA. The Invaders' near-impenetrable defense resulted in a record low of just 149 goals scored against them, an average of just 3.7 goals per game, while the offense ripped the back of the net for an average of almost six goals a game. Canton established new standards for power play efficiency and penalty killing.
Manhattan also received the honor of hosting the AISA's first All-Star game, pitting the defending champion invaders against the best players from the rest of the league. But even the league's galaxy of stars were no match for the invaders as the partisan Civic Center crowd delighted in a seven-goal second-half outburst that turned a 4-2 deficit into a 9-4 Canton win. The Invaders and the AISA are still in their infancy, but someday in the future, soccer fans will point to the AISA's first dynasty. The Invaders have brought a new tradition to the city of Canton, a championship tradition. Last year, we told you the Invasion had begun. This year, the Invasion continues, and it's guaranteed to be spectacular. Action packed and totally relentless. You must come and see Star County's own American Indoor Soccer Association championship team, the Canton Invaders. And once you've experienced the electrifying excitement of just one home game, you'll have to see them all. Be a part of this year's repeat command performance. Come out and get invaded by them. Be there to witness the only professional championship team 